so excited to show you what's in this box, so let's dive into it. Today, we've got the Raspberry Pi 5 with 16 gig of RAM, an active cooler, and the AI hat. Now, this AI hat comes in two forms. You can get the 13 tops or the 26 tops version, and we've got the more powerful one. In today's video, we're gonna set all of this up and I'm gonna show you the performance improvement the AI hat makes when actually running these large language models on your Raspberry Pi. So let's start with a baseline. We've got our Raspberry Pi 5 here with some power. Now there's no AI hat or cooler on it yet. We're first going to run through the official documentation to update our firmware. I'm going to establish a baseline by running a large language model. We'll see how it performs. We'll then add the cooler, run the same test again to see if the cooling makes a noticeable impact. And then finally, we're going to install the AI hat and run the exact same test again. So let's start with that firmware. I'm going to remote into my Raspberry Pi. We're going to copy this command open up a terminal window and quickly run it. There were quite a lot of packages to update. It took about five minutes to finish. Next up, we're gonna check our firmware version. We're gonna run this command and we need to see 6th of December, 2023 or a later date. Cool. That looks fine for us. That's it in terms of software updates. So now we're going to run a large language model. Alama is a free piece of software that lets you run large language models across any device. If you want to learn more, I'll leave a link somewhere up here where I've talked about this in a previous video. Now we're going to run Llama 3.2, which I believe is a 3 billion parameter model. The responses are quite slow. I'll just show you what it looks like. We're getting about three to four tokens a second. Now we're going to shut this down and install the active cooler. To install the fan, we're going to remove this plastic film. And there are two push pins. Now you want to align the two push pins on either side with these two inside holes on your Raspberry Pi 5. This is the correct layout that you want to follow, ensuring that the pins line up nicely. So we're gonna gently place that into the correct position. Once you're happy they line up, you want to evenly press on these two push pins until you hear it click in place. like so, and you'll see that it's actually pushed through to the other side, like that. Next up, you need to connect this into the fan socket. Now that is this little thing over here. If you notice a small little plastic covering, it's very hard to get into focus, but this was in the way, so you can simply just pull it out. And you wanna make sure that you insert it correctly where the holes in this little cable line up to the pins on that side. It'll just slot into place. Job done! We're now going to give it some power and we're going to run that test again. When I turned the Pi on, the fan kicked in for a couple of seconds, which lets us know that it's working correctly. We're now going to run that model again. So we're going to type olama run llama 3.2 now, the purpose of performing this test again when we only added a cooler is because on the Raspberry Pi lineup, when you max your CPU, it very quickly hits the top end temperature. I think it's like 85 degrees. When it hits that, they artificially slow the CPU down so that the temps come back to a more manageable level. By having proper cooling in place, we're able to see the effects of that thermal throttling. Now, it looks like performance is pretty much the same, so we know that thermal throttling isn't the bottleneck, but rather the speed of the CPU itself. Now for the longer response here, I can see the fan has started to kick in, so maybe it will make a difference. 
it made a very slight difference. We're talking under half a token a second difference. So let's now go ahead, install the AI hat with 26 tops and compare the difference. In the box we have some screws, an adapter, and the AI hat itself. To install it, we're going to begin with the screws and the spaces. So there should be four spaces that we want to insert, and there should be eight screws. Each spacer will go into each hole around the edge of the Raspberry Pi. There's actually two different types of screws, one's long and one is short. The official documentation didn't tell me which ones to use, so I'm using the long ones for the bottom base, and then I'll use the short ones for the AI hat later on. Don't think it matters too much. And I'm just loosely screwing these in, not doing it too tight. Cool. Now we're going to take that GPIO pin adapter and install it. According to the official documentation, it doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you line it up correctly, there's no right or wrong way. Just making sure they're lined up and gently pressing them down evenly. I'm actually a bit nervous because I'm using a little bit of pressure here and there we go, pressed it down into place. Now that did take a bit of pressure and it hurts your fingers. Maybe I should have used a cloth or something, so yeah, just be aware. Now to install the AI hat, we need to remove this piece of tape carefully. And this ribbon cable needs to slot into this section here. There's actually a little holder where if you lift your fingernail underneath, you'll hear like a click and you can see it moves into place. So lift it up and there should be a small opening for you to thread this into. You can hear it kind of push and click into place. Once you've got it into place, push this down again from both ends. Should look like that when you're done. Once that's done, we want to then line up the pins and then push them down. Once you've got it lined up, they actually go in quite easy and you shouldn't have to use too much pressure at all. End result looks something like this. To finish it off, we're gonna grab those four remaining screws and just screw it into place. This is what the final product should look like. Cable inserted, pins are aligned. All right, we're gonna give it some power and start it up. All right, we're back onto our Raspberry Pi. Now we do have to run a couple of commands. So we're going to copy this, open up a terminal window and install some prerequisites. This is going to install all the libraries and dependencies required to get your MPU on the AI hat running properly. This will take a little while to install, so we'll go away and come back in a little bit. And that's done. We're going to give it a quick reboot. So sudo reboot. We're back up and running. Now we do want to type this following command in. Go ahead and hit enter. And if you've done everything correctly, you should see some output like this, with the firmware version, the name of your board, the architecture, and if you see NA against serial part and product name, don't worry. According to the official documentation, that is okay. As long as you see some kind of output from that command, that means you've set everything up successfully. So now we can go ahead and run that final test. Let's fire up Olama and start our large language model. We're gonna do olama run llama 3.2 with the verbose option.
Now, surprisingly, that made no difference at all. We're still getting four tokens a second. It looks like the AI hat only supports image processing. It's meant to be used with their camera and does nothing when it comes to running large language models. That's really unfortunate. I was really hoping we could have a basic large language model running on a tiny PC. <sighs> Lesson learnt, I should have done more research. At least I can share that with you guys so you know that the AI hat doesn't improve LLM performance at all in the slightest. Now, thankfully, I had also gone out and purchased the Raspberry Pi camera because I wanted to get into object detection anyway. So while I'm disappointed we can't do our local AI chatbot, we can still do image recognition, which we're gonna dive into in a future video. <laughs> this video didn't go as I expected, but I hope you still enjoyed it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.